FAQ number 11, is the King James Version double inspired? Okay, there's this, this uh, you know, there's all these attacks that these Roman Catholic Alexandrians try to put on Bible-believing Christians, and they say, you know, they say, do you believe that the King James Bible is inspired, the inspired Word of God? We say, oh, yes, I do. Oh, well, it's just a translation. No translation can be inspired, so therefore you must believe that God double inspired. He inspired it in the originals, you know, the Hebrew and the Greek. Here we have it from the Trinitarian Bible Society. He inspired that, and then later on he inspired the King James Bible. Double inspiration. You know, he breathed it out again, you know, and stuff like this. Well, I just want to make a couple points there. First of all, um, breathing out is not what inspiration is. That's expiration. When you go, oh, that's expiring. You're breathing out. Oh, is inspiration. You breathe in. Oh, that's inspiration. God breathes into the pages of Scripture, okay? It's not breathing out. So, again, this, you know, it, it literally means breathed out. No, it does not. That's ridiculous. Give me a break. But let's look at the passage of Scripture here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So Paul clearly defines copies of scripture because Timothy did not have the original autographs. The scriptures that he had, the holy scriptures that he had, were copies of copies of copies. And Paul clearly defines those copies as being inspired. Can you have an inspired copy? Yes. Can you have an inspired translation? Turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we'll begin at uh, verse 4. It says here, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, and out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So now you know what tongues is in your Bible. Just another word for language. Okay, it's not some wacky thing that charismatics do. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are, are not all these which speak Galileans? Look at this. Verse 8, And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus in, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya around or about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Wait a second. I thought the original autographs, the originals were Greek for the New Testament, Hebrew for the Old Testament. God couldn't have inspired the uh, what these guys were saying there, preaching in uh, all those languages that we just read there, could he? Yeah. Can God inspire other languages other than English, or other than Greek and Hebrew? Oh, sure. Absolutely. And you see, the Hebrew and Greek receive God's inspiration. And when you make a proper translation of that and compare other languages as well, which the King James translators did, you have a proper inspired translation. You say, what's the proof? The fruit that it bears. No other Bible has produced this kind of fruit. Not one ever printed. Do I believe that this book is inspired? Oh, absolutely. You know, I've heard it said this way. Another way that they say it is, you know, you pick a, a peach from off of a tree and the peach is the original. And then you take the peach in and you cook it and you, you put it in a can thing and you, and you put some sugar with it and you, you whatever else. And now it's jelly or preserves or whatever. And it's no longer peach, right? No. You see, translation means moving from one area to another. You're translating it. You're moving it. Okay, now if you put a whole bunch of other junk in with the peach and it's, you know, it can cease to become peach after a while, you know, you're adding a whole bunch of other stuff to it. Kind of like adding the Apocrypha, you know, and other things here, traditions and other 
phrases that don't appear in the true text over here, you know, the Alexandrian readings and stuff like that. Yeah, that's not a real good, this isn't a good translation of the what the originals would have been, you know. The King James Bible is. So this thing of, of because I hold to the, the, to the King James Bible being inspired, uh, that does not mean I believe it was re-inspired or double-inspired in 1611, from 1604 to 1611. That's nonsense. Again, it's another attack from this crowd over here, this Catholic crowd that seeks to undermine the authority of Scripture. Okay, Don't fall for that nonsense. The King James Bible is inspired. It is the inspired Word of God. Why? Because God inspired translations in the original and because that promise of inspiration doesn't go away when it's properly translated. And that's why I believe, too, that you've, if you have another language, I have a brother over in the Faroe Islands that did a, a translation for his people, the Faroese translation, by using a King James Bible. Sure, absolutely. Totally believe that that's just as inspired as the King James Bible is. Making proper translations preserves that inspiration from the ancient languages to our English of today. Don't let people wreck your faith in the King James Bible. 